Hi guys, Mama 2024 was a mess. Let's start with the first day in LA. This was supposed to be Mama's first US hosted event, but it looked like it was cobbled together in someone's garage with leftover budget scraps. Let's address the elephant in the room, the venue, who thought this cramped lifeless space could hold the weight of a Mama event. This is the brand that gave us sprawling stadium stages and jaw-dropping productions, yet here we were stuck watching idols try to perform on a box-sized stage. It screamed last-minute panic booking, and the audience? What was that? It didn't look like a crowd of K-pop fans, it looked like a LinkedIn networking event where everyone was handed a ticket at the door, cocktail dresses, suits. This isn't a film premiere, it's a K-pop awards show. Where were the light sticks, the screaming fans, the energy that makes these events electric? Half of them looked like they didn't even know who was performing, let alone care. Were these actual fans or paid seat fillers who accidentally wandered into the wrong event? The production value was another slap in the face. Watching it back after the Japan show felt like watching a downgraded knockoff. Mama Japan was vibrant, loud, and unapologetically grand, the US version. It had all the charm of a corporate training seminar. And don't even get me started on the sound mixing, at times. It felt like I was watching an amateur YouTube live stream, not an internationally broadcast awards show. As for the presenters, they were an awkward cherry on top of this mess, they felt overly self-indulgent, hyping themselves more than the performers or nominees. Look, if Mama wants to conquer the West, they need to bring their A-game. K-Con has already proven that the US audience will show up and show out for K-pop, so why Mama thought it was okay to cut corners is beyond me. Either do it right or don't do it at all, if this is the best they can offer. They should pack it up and stay in Asia, the lineup was such a baffling choice too. We had Cat's Eye, JYP, TWS, Rise, Illit and Young Posse, all rookie groups, and most of their fanbases are firmly rooted in Southeast Asia, so why ship them off to the US, where they're barely known? Cat's Eye makes sense, they're positioned as a global group, but Illit, Rise, TWS? These groups have been marketed almost exclusively in Asia, and their success is centered there sending them to this half-baked watered-down version of Mama instead of the main event in Japan? It's downright insulting. It's even worse when you remember that this is their first Mama. This is supposed to be a huge moment for them. Instead, they get stuck performing on a tiny stage in front of a crowd of zombies. If I were in their shoes, I'd be absolutely livid. The awards handed out at this first show felt sparse, with only a few actually worth noting. The most significant was Rookie of the Year, which went to Illid and TWS. Honestly, no complaints there. These two rookies dominated the past year and it's a deserved win. Meanwhile, Rise snagged the obligatory attendance award for favorite global performer. Because why not hand out something for just showing up? TWS also took home best dance performance. And that sparked a lot of criticism. Let's be real. TWS winning best dance raised plenty of eyebrows because stronger choreographies were absolutely on the table. But let's face it. This award has stopped being about actual dance. It's more of a glorified most successful song that happens to have a dance award, TWS's song was a domestic hit, and that's the real reason they won. It's the same pattern we saw last year when Jisoo won Best Dance. Performance for Flower, her choreography was basically hand movements and posing, yet she won because her debut was a massive success, at this point, they might as well rename the category to reflect what it's really about. Popularity and not performance, now let's talk performances, the standout were Young Posse, JYP, TWS and Cat's Eye, because at least they had the guts to sing live, Young Posse genuinely impressed me, their live delivery was on point, with strong vocals, solid rapping and great presence, JYP has always brought his signature goofy energy and his set was 100% raw, no backtrack, just pure performance, Cat's Eye and TWS had a noticeable backtrack, but at least their live vocals pushed through and added some authenticity, now on to the disappointments, Illit and Rise, they fully lip-synced their stages, Live singing is the bare minimum at an event of this scale, or at least it should be. Watching them mime their way through their sets was a letdown, and it only highlighted how much better the other acts were by comparison. Lastly, I want to talk about Anton getting attacked online by OT7 Rise stands. During Rise's acceptance speech, Anton spoke in English, vaguely hinting at all the drama with Sunghan and thanking the fans in SM. His speech was really vague, but a lot of people are interpreting it as him telling OT7 stands to move on. I'm glad he acknowledged the situation but I feel like this was all planned by SM and they set Anton up. This whole speech is peak SM cowardice. Instead of owning up to their mess, they threw Anton under the bus to act as their mouthpiece. It's ridiculous that they're perfectly capable of micromanaging protests for Sunghan, banning the color orange, chucking out flags, silencing fans. But they did absolutely nothing. When Sunghan was being relentlessly dragged and literal funeral wreaths were piling up outside the SM building, where was that energy then? Making Anton deliver that soulless PR scripted speech was just another insult, 
the kid's barely out of rookie territory, and they're already using him as a human shield to absorb the fallout of their incompetence. SM is the one that created this dumpster fire, but instead of stepping up, they turned Anton into a sacrificial lamb, it's pathetic. Next up, let's talk about Mama's second day in Tokyo, this one threw out way more awards than day one. But most of them felt like attendance trophies. Like, can someone explain the difference between global favorite artist and favorite international artist? Because it feels like they're just making up categories to hand out more trophies. It's giving clown at a kid's birthday party vibes, just tossing awards left and right without any real significance. Nothing even sparked debate, except for one award. BTS's Jimin winning the day sang for fans choice of the year, this is where things got spicy, in hype and fans went off because their group didn't win and they're dragging Jimin online like he personally rigged the voting. But here's the thing. They're completely missing the point. The Daesang voting for fans' choice of the year is not the same as the voting for the top 10 fans' choice. Yes, Inhypen was leading the top 10 category, but that's a separate award with its own rules and system. The names might sound similar, but they're not interchangeable, and acting like Jimin snatched something away from Inhypen is just plain ignorant, if anything. This just highlights how confusing and messy Mama's award structure has become, there. Throwing around so many overlapping categories that fans don't even know what they're voting for anymore, it's chaotic and unnecessary, and instead of celebrating the winners, people are stuck arguing over logistics that Mama could have easily clarified. But regardless, it's embarrassing to see fans throwing a tantrum on Twitter over Jimin winning a fan-voted award, seriously? As if BTS hasn't been dominating this category since 2018, it's BTS for crying out loud, did y'all forget who we're talking about here? The audacity to act shocked that armies can outvote anyone is laughable. This whole military hiatus must have scrambled some brains, because people really thought armies disappeared. Spoiler alert, they haven't. Jimin's summer comeback is still charting. Do you even check global charts? Armies didn't vanish, they're just lying low until they need to flex. If the award had actually been rigged, I'd be the first to call it out. But this wasn't, it's literally fan votes. Moving on, let's talk about the performances. Starting with the biggest letdown, Bruno Mars and Rosie, despite both of them being present at the show, their stage was pre-recorded, what a classic mama scam, they hyped this up like it was going to be a once in a lifetime, drop everything and watch, kind of, performance, only to deliver a glorified YouTube video on a big screen, Rosie and Bruno Mars physically in the building and they couldn't be bothered to actually touch the main stage, why fly them out and slap their names all over the promo, was it Bruno's choice, probably, but the choice to make this the finale was a masterclass in how to kill momentum. They dangled this performance like a carrot in front of the audience for hours, only to give us something that felt phoned in. If Mama had framed it as a special mid-show treat or just billed them as special appearances, no one would have batted an eye. But no, they wanted the drama, the suspense, and the viewership numbers. This isn't even about the quality of the performance. Because Rosie and Bruno delivered as expected, but the lack of energy, the pre-recorded format and the we're just here for the paycheck vibes absolutely sucked the life out of what should have been an iconic closer. Instead, it came off like Mama pulled a fast one on everyone. Milking big names for clout while cheaping out on execution. Next up, let's talk about Ive. Whoever orchestrated Ive's stage deserves a permanent spot on the what not to do list. That AI opening? A dumpster fire of cringe and mediocrity. It actively detracted from the performance. AI themes might be trendy but this looked like it was whipped up using leftover CGI from a 2008 direct-to-DVD sci-fi movie. And don't even get me started on the sound mixing, whoever handled that needs to reconsider their career, the backtrack was so obnoxiously loud that the girls had to practically scream into their mics just to be heard. It was painful to watch them giving it their all, only to be sabotaged by trash sound engineering, you could literally hear them fighting the audio, their live vocals barely peeking through, and it's obvious they were working overtime to compensate for the mess. Despite all this, the girls absolutely killed it on stage, you can see them going full throttle, giving everything they've got, and somehow slaying even with the odds stacked against them. Props to I for saving a performance that Mama clearly tried to ruin, Isna also shocked me. They haven't even debuted yet, but there's something about them that screams anything but rookie. Sure, their stage was fully lip-synced, but they performed, the energy, the chemistry, the stage presence, they absolutely ate and left. No crumbs, their cohesion and polish are impressive, especially for a survival show group, which often lack that level of synergy this early on, they're definitely a group to watch when it comes to performances, that said, I can't say the same for their music. They performed the title track Isna from their upcoming debut album, and honestly, it felt hollow, the song lacked impact, like an intro masquerading as a title song, if their performance is anything to go by, they have potential, but the actual music needs to step up, for the rest of the stages. In Hypen and TXT were solid as expected, though the lack of live vocals was noticeable. 
but their choreo were literally insane, especially in Hypen and TXT's Yeonjun, but if I'm being honest, Treasure and Boy Next Door absolutely outshined everyone, I'm not even a fan of Treasure's discography, but their ability to balance strong rapping and emotional depth with such finesse was impressive, and Boy Next Door was the real highlight, bringing a theatrical fun vibe that felt like anything but rookie level, the production value, stage presence, direction, dancers, live vocals, everything was on point and made it hard to believe they're still a rookie group, on the other hand Lee Yunji was a standout, she's unmatched when it comes to hyping the crowd, her interactions with other idols, her dancing and the way she genuinely enjoyed her colleagues' stages made her segments so entertaining, every time she came on stage, it was a guaranteed good time, she's just a force of nature and I can't get enough of her energy, the collaboration stage was another pleasant surprise, it felt cohesive and actually collaborative, unlike last year where everyone performed separately, it was one of the better collab stages Mama has put together recently, and that's all for today. I'll be covering the third day in my next video, so stay tuned.